There we go. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> we're, 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 it's, it's slowly loading and going. I'm just trying to make sure that. I see you on my Facebook. You see me? Hi, everybody. <laughs> How are you? Now, let's see if I can get back to my Zoom screen so I can see you. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Ask the Nanny. I'm going to learn how to do this right the first time. It just keeps... Um, hold on. I'm supposed to go to the bottom. There we go. I got it. Yay. Hi, everyone. <laughs> I'm still figuring this new thing, this new system out. Uh, welcome to Ask the Nanny. Today is November the 25th. It's the week of Thanksgiving. And I am thankful that I have another year to be thankful. And I am thankful that um, the funk that I was in uh, for the last couple of weeks, uh, I spoke with someone today on Facebook who had just recently lost their dad. And it kind of just, and she was stressing about her mom because her mom was missing her dad. And so it just kind of put things into perspective for me. And it made me more thankful for what my dad had taught me and everything that has uh, been instilled within me and that I was not as sad as she was. So it kind of just brought me out of the funk. So I'm thankful for that. And I would like to welcome our special guest, uh, Miss Wendy. She Hello. is, um, uh, I'll let her tell you about herself. So. Tonight we are talking about um, baby led weaning. Is this for your baby or no? I just started working with solids with a six month old. So mom is on the fence about, you know, the baby led weaning. So I figured I better find out. So who better to ask than someone who knows what they're talking about? So Ms. Wendy. Tell us about, about yourself and how you got started on the baby led weaning. Yes, absolutely. So my name is Wendy and I uh, own a company called Nanny Consults that I started earlier this year. And I have been a nanny for a little over 15 years now, almost 16 years. Um, and I started as a newborn care specialist about two years ago, and then I opened my consulting company this past year in February. Um, and my consulting company works both with families and with families, I do sleep consulting, I do my newborn care specialist work, I do um, hiring a nanny consulting, and I do introducing solids coaching, which is a little bit what we'll be talking about today. We'll be talking about baby led weaning. Um, but when I do my introducing solids coaching with families, I actually go in and I do like a two hour presentation of all the things you need to know about introducing solids, when to do it, why to do it, when, what to give them, what your choices are for presenting it. So tonight we're just gonna be covering kind of the baby led weaning portion of that. Um, but I kind of go through it all when I work with families. And then my consulting company also works alongside nannies, which is something I've been passionate about for a long time. And I work on interview coaching and resumes and contracts and conflict resolution alongside nannies uh, throughout the world, really. I do both in-person coaching and um, coaching through Zoom like we're doing here and Facebook and, and online coaching when I can. So. Um, you can check out more about my website at nannyconsults.com or at my Facebook page, which is also Nanny Consults. Um, but I'm just really excited to be here today and to talk about baby led weaning because it's something I've been passionate about for a very long time. Yay. And I plan on, I, what, I don't even know what I do with my pen. I have, okay, I'm looking for a pen and now I'm knocking everything over. But um, I plan on writing this down down and taking it back to mom so I can look all educated and everything <laughs> because she really wants to try it but she doesn't know whether that's for her because she's she's nervous about it's her only baby so you know how parents are about their babies 
you know. Yeah, absolutely. But she did take the, uh, which is one of the, my first questions for you, because I had um, um, Karen Holland on a few weeks ago, and she was telling us that she does CPR for parents who are who are interested in doing the baby led weaning mm -hmm. and she kind of coped because they need to know you know if you're doing baby led weaning you know you need to know CPR and you know child's choking and all that well my mom has just taken CPR last week so we got that out of the way now mm -hmm. I want to ask you how important that is for a parent to know CPR, not just for baby led weaning, but that's what we're talking about. But how important is it for a parent to just know CPR, period, for their baby? So, so, and I'll go into the safety of baby led weaning versus other types of introducing solids in a little bit. Okay. But what I will say is it is 100% always important for any parent to have CPR training, but even more importantly, first aid training as a parent. Um, and CPR often does cover the Heimlich maneuver, which is what you use when baby is choking, mm -hmm. but sometimes it doesn't. What that's usually in is in the first aid portion. So people will take CPR, but they'll kind of leave the first aid out. And what I will tell you is that in 15 years of being a nanny, I've never had to use CPR, but I have had to use a lot of first aid and I have had to use the Heimlich maneuver. Yes. So um, <laughs> I recommend to every new parent to do CPR and first aid before baby is born and then to do first aid again, either around the one year mark or when they're starting to introduce solids, depending on their comfort level with what they learned prior to baby being born. Okay. Okay. So I was thinking the same thing, but I just, you know, needed a professional opinion. So <laughs> tell us about baby led wing. All right, let's talk about baby led weaning. Uh, so baby led weaning is something I'm very passionate about and I'll again, go into a little more of that in a few minutes. Um, but first what I wanna do is tell you, regardless of whatever I tell you tonight, if you really wanna learn more about baby led weaning, you need this book. Um, it says baby led weaning, the essential guide. This is the updated version, um, the 10th anniversary edition, but the original edition is great as well. It's by, let's see. Gil Rapley, PhD, and Tracy Merkett. And this will give you all of those details that you need about baby lead weaning. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later, but that really is an essential guide. If you wanna do baby lead weaning, it will help put a lot of your fears at ease and give you a lot of the information I'm just gonna touch on tonight and the reasons okay. why. Um, so what I wanna do first is talk about what weaning is because people hear baby lead weaning and they're not, uh, they don't recognize the term. It's actually not something that's new. It's just that the term is new within like the last 10 years. Um, but weaning is the very gradual change that your baby makes from having only milk, whether it be breast milk or formula, to subbing in complementary foods, which would be your solids or your purees, mm -hmm. um, and eventually having no breast milk or formula at all. So the weaning process can last anywhere from one year to four or five years, depending on how long your baby continues breastfeeding for. Most formula fed babies now are stopping formula feeding sometime between the first and second birthday. Um, breastfed babies, it's more like two to five years most of the time now. So that weaning right. process isn't something that happens right at four months or right at six months or right at nine months. It's something that's a very gradual process. So when we're talking about baby led weaning, what that means is that you're letting baby have control of a lot of that process, which sounds really scary to a lot of people because they look at a little six month old baby and go, um, they don't know what they're doing yet, they're new. <laughs> so uh, <laughs> yeah. we as parents, we as nannies, we as newborn care specialists, just adults in general, we really like control. And uh, so we wanna have that control. And with traditional weaning, we do have that control. With traditional weaning, you usually start around four to six months of age, depending what your pediatrician is telling you, what your mother-in-law is telling you, what your sister is telling you, what your neighbor down the street is telling you, and what your mom is telling you. You're going to start sometime in that four to six month period, introducing okay. very, very thin purees um, and spoon feeding it into your baby's mouth. 
okay? And then sometime after that, they're gonna be a little bit thicker purees and then they're gonna be lumpier purees and eventually you're gonna put little tiny pieces of food in front of them. And then somewhere between 18 months to two and a half years, they're gonna be fully eating meals alongside the family. Um, depending on the family. Sometimes that could be three years old, sometimes that could be at 12 months old. But with traditional weaning, I would say kind of the 15 to 24 month age is gonna be typical for when baby is kind of starting to eat the same foods that the whole family is eating. Now in baby led weaning, you wait a little bit longer and I'll go into some of the developmentally ready stages here in a minute. Um, okay. Baby led weaning, you start around six months old and you really trust their readiness factors and what they're doing to tell you when they're ready to start solid foods. Uh, your baby is going to sit at the table with you and eat during your meal times. So instead of having a separate baby meal time or furiously spoon feeding food into your baby's mouth while your food's getting cold, <laughs> uh, baby's just going to sit at the table with you. Um, your baby is going to be encouraged to explore foods as soon as they're interested by picking it up with their own hands. So instead of putting purees on a spoon, you're actually going to start with solid, solid foods. Uh, so it can look like, kind of scary when you've got a six month old and you're handing them a stock of broccoli or a chicken leg and they're only six months old and they've never had any food before. It's a little creepy to most people if you haven't done it before, but that's what you're gonna do with baby lead weaning. You're gonna encourage them to explore the food with their own hands and their own mouths. And it doesn't matter at first if they eat any. This is another big difference from purees. From purees, you're putting it in their mouth and if they spit it back out again, you do, we all know the spoon swipe, you do the spoon swipe and you stick it back in there again. Uh, <laughs> With baby led weaning, you're trusting them to pick up the food, put it in their mouth. I'm gonna tell you 99% of the time, those first couple of weeks, that food comes right back out of the mouth. None of it gets, gets down the throat. None of it gets digested those first few weeks. At first, it's just exploration for most babies. Um, okay. Your food is gonna be offered in pieces that are an appropriate size or shape for their developmental readiness. We're gonna talk about that again. Um, they are going to feed themselves from day one. And one of the rules of baby led weaning is that nobody else gets to put food in baby's mouth. Not you, not the provide, daycare provider, not grandma or grandpa or big sister. Wow. Um, baby is the only person who gets to put food in their own mouth, at least at first. They do grow into sometimes taking a little food from other people. But when they're learning, they are the only ones that get to put anything in their mouth. Okay. Um, so the parents, the parents' job as uh, when you're doing baby led weaning is to provide options for a meal. Um, and typically those options are gonna come from whatever the family's eating. One of the big facets of baby led weaning is uh, that it's a family meal. You're gonna eat all around the same table and you're gonna eat all the same foods. Now, sometimes they might have to be slightly um, altered to fit baby's developmental readiness for those foods, but for the most part, they're gonna be eating of the same foods that you and your family are eating every night. The baby's job then is to choose what of the options to eat and how much of those options to eat um, from what's placed in front of them. Baby is gonna choose when to start eating, when to stop eating, whether they eat or whether they don't. And your baby is gonna to continue to have milk feedings whenever they need and decide for themselves when they're going to drop those milk feedings, uh, which is typically gonna come around nine to 12 months with a baby led weaning baby. They're gonna to start to decrease that milk intake. So let's talk about, do you have any questions so far? No, I, I'm just, I'm learning that uh, it was just surprising that nobody puts food in the baby's mouth except the baby. Yep. And there's some yeah. reasons for that. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna talk about those in a minute. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but first I wanna talk about what developmental readiness looks like in your infant. Because a lot of people, I'm sure you were told for a long time, babies should start solids around four months, right? Um, yes. This is what I was taught for a long but time. But I was taught, we start with rice cereal, which yes. is one thing I stay away from. <laughs> and that um, and is very parents. <laughs> don't even buy it. Don't bring it in the house. I'm not going to feed it to your child. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, rice cereal is very, very difficult on the digestive system. Um, so let's talk about what readiness looks like. And this goes, by the way, for both um, uh, puree fed babies and baby led weaning fed babies. 
solids should not be introduced for the most part until at least six months of age. Now I just did, um, I'm a master in newborn care specialist. I just uh, graduated from the newborn care solutions master program a couple weeks ago. Um, My favorite program. <laughs> uh, and one of the things you have to do for the master program is do a research project. So guess what? I did mine on when to introduce solids. So I have a 15 page paper backing up what I'm telling you right here. Wow. Six months is when your child is most of the time developmentally ready for foods. And this is for a lot of reasons, specifically their developmental readiness. And that includes their digestive system, their gastrointestinal development, their immune development, and especially their oral motor development. They're just not ready until they're six months old. And there's a lot of reasons for that. I don't have enough time to go into them all tonight. But very specifically, um, those oral motor development, a baby's oral anatomy is not ready to chew and swallow foods with intention yet before they're six months of age. And what happens then if you're spoon feeding them before um, six months of age and their oral anatomy is not ready, the food is either going to project back out again or it's going to slide directly down their throat which gives a very increased risk of choking. Now they are gonna gag a little bit uh, to usually get it into the correct tube so that they don't aspirate on the food, but not always. And so it's actually pretty unsafe to be feeding a baby who doesn't have the proper oral motor development a solid, solid foods. Okay. Um, they're also solid foods are not nearly as densely packed with nutrients as breast milk or formula is, and they're harder to digest and harder to absorb those nutrients. So even if they're eating a lot of solid foods prior to that six month mark, they just don't have the gastrointestinal system to absorb those nutrients into their bloodstream. But what they are going to do is not be as hungry for milk. So this breast milk and this formula that's providing this amazing nutrition is going to be replaced by these solids that are not absorbing into the bloodstream. So you're actually decreasing your child's nutrition if you're starting solids before that six month mark because they're not getting adequate nutrition from their milk. Um, typically before six months of age, solid foods have to be pureed. Baby led weaning is just not appropriate for a child that does, hasn't met certain developmental milestones. Um, and like I said, if they're eating a lot of puree paid foods, it's very easy to overfeed. If they over, you overfeed them, they're gonna start refusing bottles and now their nourishment and their nutrition is going downhill. Um, solid foods too early also make an infant's immune system work much harder. And when it's doing that, it doesn't have as much energy to expend on fighting off disease and infections. So your child who is fed before six months of age has a lot more likelihood of contracting infections and illness. Wow. Uh, so, so basically uh, feeding them too early makes them, compromises their immune system. Yep. So all of these things together, for the most part, you want to wait until at least six months to introduce foods. Now there is one caveat to that. If your child is at high risk for allergies, new studies have come out that tell you that introducing high allergen foods, specifically peanuts and eggs, during the four to six month age window will vastly decrease their possibility for developing those allergies. Hmm. Uh, so you kind of have to weigh your options. So. What the AAP considers high risk allergies to be is if, if your child suffers from severe eczema or from asthma, or if you have a family history of allergies, or say you've gone to a, an allergist because they had a reaction to something in your breast milk, if they've been tested for allergies and come up positive with a skin prick test. Those are all high risk allergy issues. Uh, and in that case, you really wanna introduce some of those high allergens between that four to six month mark. Now, my favorite way to do that, uh, egg and peanut butter, like I said, are the main ones. Both of those you can get in powdered form and you can mix in a small amount of breast milk and feed by bottle or feed by spoon in very small amounts. And this shouldn't affect introducing food by baby led weaning later on. It's when you're starting to feed full meals 
purees that it's going to affect if you want to do baby led weaning later on. Okay. So that's just something to keep in mind. Um, the AAP and the WHO both say if you aren't at high risk of allergies, just to make sure you introduce those high allergen foods as some of the first foods out there. So right when you're starting to offer foods, make sure you're offering some peanut butter every week. Make sure you're offering some eggs. Um, if you are at high risk of allergies, I highly recommend every family work alongside an allergist before introducing any foods um, because it's just will give you that peace of mind to know that you have somebody in your corner who can walk you through these scary steps if you've got high risk allergy infants. So the other developmental readiness things to look for are the ability to sit either unassisted or mostly unassisted. Now, most infants can't sit completely unassisted until closer to eight or nine months of age, but they can sit mostly unassisted. That means they can sit for you know 15 to 30 seconds by themselves. They can kind of do the tripod position. They can lift themselves up, but they might still be a little teeter tottery going side to side. That's okay. As long as they can sit mostly unassisted, um, what you're looking for is their trunk support. Uh, the, the musculature within you know, their stomach and their back to sit upright or slightly forward. What you don't want is your baby to be have to be reclined when they're eating. So I want you to do just a little exercise with me. So sit up straight and close your mouth, okay? So when you close your mouth, your tongue rests on the top of your mouth, right? Unless right. you've got major tongue mm -hmm. tie, lip ties. <laughs> but, uh, no, I don't have any of those. It sits on the top of your mouth and it almost creates a seal in the back of your mouth. Can you notice mm -hmm. that? Um, yes. If you were to try and shove food in your closed mouth right now, it's not gonna go anywhere. Now I want you just to lean your head back slightly and notice how the tobacco of your tongue- Oh, it came down. Mm -hmm. It's no longer- <laughs> I've never done that before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, yeah. As you lean back, your tongue is no longer protecting the back of your mouth and your esophagus and your trachea back there. So if your child is reclined and you're shoving food into their mouth, they don't have that protection of their tongue to keep food from sliding directly back into the throat. You want them to be able to eat with intention. And um, if they're reclined, they can't eat with intention because they're not gonna have um, the skills to move that food around in their mouth as much. Well, so- I have learned something tonight. <laughs> uh, I, I never noticed that until you said that. Yeah, so, okay. Um, you want them to be able to sit mostly unassisted. You want them to have good head control. You want them to be able to sit up straight or slightly forward, not in a reclined position. You also want to make sure your baby's showing interest at food. If your baby's sitting at you with the dinner table every night and they have no interest in whatever is on your plate, they're probably not ready to eat yet. And that's okay. When they start showing interest and they've reached these other milestones, that's going to be the time you start putting food in front of them. Okay. Um, you want to know that they can pick up items and move them to their mouth. Now this starts somewhere around the four to five months of age usually where they start picking up items and trying to get it to their mouth. They do this a lot. Um, around that six month of age mark, they're going to start actually getting it to their mouth. They're going to get that fist to their mouth. Okay. Um, so those are your readiness signs that you're looking for. Signs of readiness that you're not looking for. Waking up at night for extra feedings. This is just developmentally appropriate for that age. Part of this reason, especially in a breastfed baby, is that they're getting a lot more distracted around four or five months of age just by everything going around and on around them and they're not eating as well. They may not be breastfeeding as much. They may not be finishing every bottle. Uh, so what you might need to do is add in an extra feeding during the day or there might be a week of time where you need to add in a little extra feeding overnight. Most of the time you can fit those extra calories in by adding an extra bottle or an extra half ounce here or there during the day. But waking at night is not saying it's time to put rice cereal in the bottle or it's time to start solids. Again, we talked about it earlier, starting purees too early will actually decrease the amount of milk your baby is taking. That's and right. if they do end up sleeping anyway, sleeping more specifically with rice cereal, it's probably because their stomach is in so much pain that it has shut their entire system off as a protective me mechanism because their digestive system isn't ready. And as much as we love sleep, we don't want our baby to sleep more because they're in pain. No. We want them to sleep more because they're well-fed and, and healthy. Yes. Um, chewing on their hands not a developmental readiness sign for 
solid foods. It's just chewing on their hands. Babies do it regardless of if they're hungry or not. It's very developmentally appropriate for them to be chewing on their hands. Uh, needing extra milk during the day, same reason as waking up at night. It's just a lot more distraction or they could be even having a growth spurt. And if they're having a growth spurt, the best nutrition possible for them is breast milk or formula, not solids yet. And that's true even after you've introduced solids. For the first, especially first nine months, breast milk and formula is gonna be the most nutritious meal that they can have. If your baby is extra chubby, that's not a developmental readiness sign for, ex for introducing solids. What they look like on the outside does not necessarily correlate to where their body is on the inside. Look for those developmental readiness signs of trunk support, head control, being able to put things directly to their mouth. Those are the signs you wanna look for, okay? Um, baby led weaning's not new. We talked about that a little bit. Um, typically, it's just something parents don't talk about. If you have multiple kids, usually your first baby, you're so excited to start solids and you do the, the baby cereal first and then you puree this beautiful strained carrots and strained peas and you're so excited for all of this. And then you've got a one and a half year old running around once your next baby's ready for some food and you can't keep track of them. So you're trying to spoon feed them, but mostly you just don't have time. And then eventually you realize, oh my gosh, they're eight months old. I should probably put some food in front of them. So then you're putting some puff biscuits in front of them. And by the time your third child comes around and you've got a three-year-old and a four-year-old running around, your third child, you're just gonna dump some chicken nuggets in front of them, just like you did, <laughs> just like you're giving your other two. This is something here. So they have their first baby and they do the purees, their second baby, they do a mixture of purees and solids and realize, oh, they can eat solids right alongside us. And by third baby, they just do solids. Um, this is very typical. It's also very European. A lot of European countries don't mess around with the purees. They just do solids from day one. Um, now, some places like India is one, they actually do purees longer or they feed baby for longer. So it's not true everywhere, but baby led weaning in itself is not new, just the name is new. It came about about 10 years ago. And 10 years ago is when I discovered it. So my personal baby led weaning journey, I, um, I started in 2004 as a career nanny, but I had been working with babies long before that. I'm one of those that started early in my teen years working with babies. Um, so I had gone through the puree process with many, many, many babies. And what I saw time and again is we started with the cereal, babies weren't so sure about it. They were spitting food out all the time. And then by around five or six months, they were taking food well. But what we were doing is we were just rushing and, and, and getting as much food as we could into their mouths in 10 minutes. And then you'd go to the six month pediatrician appointment and they'd say, okay, well, they need to be on three meals of eight ounces per day right now and still taking 24 to 30 ounces of milk. So they're wanting you to give, now, by the way, these recommendations have also changed in the last 10 years, but 10 years ago, they were recommending about 24 ounces of baby food a day, a puree, and 24 ounces of milk per day. And you hit the seven month mark and babies eating their 24 to 30 ounces of purees, but suddenly they don't want more than a bottle or two a day. We'd be lucky to get 12 ounces into them. Right. Well, then parents are freaking out because the little chart that the pediatricians gave said that they're supposed to be getting 24 ounces of milk. So then I was being asked to force feed babies milk and I'd force feed them the milk. And then I was asked to force feed them the puree because when you force fed them the, the milk, then they weren't hungry for the puree. And what you ended up was a gagging, sputtering baby who was just overfull and sick and didn't feel good. And it was a fight and I was miserable every day and they were miserable every day. And I thought something here has to be wrong. And the other thing that I noticed is about, ten, about 15 years ago, I started making homemade baby food. Uh, in the last 15 years, no baby that I've watched has had packaged baby food. And that's yes. been very I thought it was just me. Yes, I do too. Yeah. So yes. you must know this, and I want you guys to think about our Thanksgiving dinners that's coming up here soon. One sweet potato typically is an average of about, about eight ounces once pureed, okay? Imagine as an adult eating one sweet potato. It's a lot of food. You're usually pretty full after you eat a whole sweet potato. Yes. Now, imagine pureeing that, eight ounces of pureed baby food and feeding that to a baby. 
and then try to imagine giving them a six ounce bottle afterwards. That baby's stomach is the size of their fist. Their fist is about this big and you're yeah. giving them an entire sweet potato and wondering why they're not hungry and why they're refusing their bottle and why their stomach is upset. The amounts of, of purees that we were giving these babies were just astronomically too big. It was too much for them. And it was no wonder that they were refusing their bottles. Um, so over and over again, I saw this bottle regression. I saw this power struggle back and forth. And you know what? We got through it every time. I always had great eaters by the time they were one and a half, two years old. Uh, usually once we dropped milk, it all became easier again. But during that nine to 12 month period or that seven to 12 month period, it was just a struggle every day and it wasn't fun for anybody. Um, around that time, I heard about baby lead weaning. I read the original book that came out in 2008. I think I read it in 2009. Um, and I said, I want to do this. And I introduced it to some of the families I work for. Since then, I have personally done baby led weaning with seven babies. And I have coached the families of more than 30 babies through baby led weaning. Wow. And what I've ended up with is great, ba great baby eaters um, that drink milk for as long as they need to and naturally go down on it and no more power struggles. And that's the biggest thing about baby led weaning is the power, lack of power struggle. It's just amazing. When you said about um, the feeding, force feeding the, the formula and force feeding the, the purees and everything, that's one of the things that I try to guide the parents in that you don't have to start out feeding your child three days, three meals a day with the purees. Start at them one, try it, see if they're gonna like it, see if they're gonna have an allergic reaction to it. And make sure that you don't try to feed four or five foods at a time because you don't know what the baby's allergic to. If they have a reaction, you have no clue. Mm -hmm. So I try to teach that to my parents, but also the fact of obesity. Mm -hmm. When you're shoving food down that baby and whatever they're not spitting up is staying in with them and they become sluggish. It messes with their development of, of their, their fine motor skills, their gross motor skills, because they're too big. They become roly poly -olies. and they're so big, they can't do what they're supposed to do to work off the, the, the calories of that milk that you're feeding, to work off the calories of the purees that you're feeding them. So. What you're saying, when you said that, I was like, oh my gosh, that's a, that's a disaster waiting to happen. That's obesity waiting to happen. That's spitting up. That's everything. And I'm, like you said, a miserable baby. If you don't feel good after you eat certain foods and you eat a certain amount of food and you eat too much and you feel, feel like full as a tick, then imagine what your baby's going through. And that's what I tell my parents. That's exactly it. What you're teaching your baby is that that's normal, that every time you eat, you should eat until you feel like that. Right. That leads to obesity. That leads to overeating. That leads to binge eating. Um, you're also teaching them not to trust their own hunger signals. Yes. And that only comes with them leading the feeding process. Um, because if you're just feeding them, you don't know when they're actually full. And by the time they tell you that they're full, typically you're about three or four spoonfuls too late because they don't recognize it and they won't tell you till they start feeling pain because they're so full. It's just like when they tell adults that we shouldn't be sitting down and eating a meal in 15 minutes. A meal should be 30 to 45 minutes or even up to an hour. The slower you eat, the more in tune you'll be with your own body's hunger signs. And it's the same thing with babies. When we're spoon feeding, we're feeding them too fast most of the time for them to recognize what's going on in their own stomachs and to tell you when to stop on time. And all of this leads to unhealthy eating habits later in life. Um, and that's one of the problems with purees, which is perfect lead in to the next section that I was gonna talk about, which is the problems with purees. And now I have nothing against purees. Uh, it sounds like I do. <laughs> I don't. I just love baby led weaning. I coach a lot of parents and we will talk through their goals, their fears, uh, what their lifestyle looks like. And sometimes purees is the best option for a family. And that's okay. Uh, it's not a one size fits all thing. I love baby led weaning, but it's not right for every family. But some of the problems with purees, some of the reasons I personally prefer baby led weaning. Um, 
Like we talked about, often it's started too early and in the reclined position and the food travels too quickly to the back of the mouth and it's either gagged or spit out or it slides directly down the throat without any effort. Um, and this can create fear or a power struggle to taking food because that's also scary for them when this food that they don't recognize is just suddenly sliding down their throat. They didn't taste it. All they know is it's a new texture and it went straight into their stomach and now their tummy a little, feels a little different. That can create fear. So they start doing the they don't want it. And then you're, you're stuck in the, okay, here comes the train, here comes the airplane. And <laughs> Those special spoons that look like airplanes and yes. trucks and cars and oh, yeah. Or, or, you know, they put it in a pouch so they can just suck the food out. And I get it, it's easier, but it's not teaching your baby how to eat healthily, okay? It's also easy to force feed your baby. We just talked about that. The here comes the train. That's actually a way of force feeding your baby or, or making them laugh and then shoving a spoon in their mouth and wiping it on the top where they can't scrub, push it back out. Right. All of these things, that's not your baby telling you them they're hungry. You're just putting food in their mouth and it's making it down. Um, and eventually, yes, it does work. But if you are gonna choose to spoon feed, listen to this stuff and make adjustments so that you're still making sure your baby has some control over how they're moving food around in their mouth, okay? Um, their appetite for milk decreases very quickly and baby may not get needed nutrients. There's not really any developmental benefits to spoon feeding a baby. It doesn't teach them te about textures. It doesn't really teach them about flavors because everything is just blended together in a mush. Uh, it doesn't teach them about spices or um, different ways of eating food or shapes and textures or hand to mouth, all of these great developmental benefits you get with baby led weaning, you don't get those with spoon feeding. Um, pureeing food also decreases, decreases the nutritionist, I can talk, uh, pureeing food decreases the nutritional value of your food, specifically vegetables and specifically vitamin C, which is extremely important. We all know how important that is for your immunity. When you puree vegetables, it actually, because of the surface area of the vegetable is changing, the vitamin C is released. And instead of getting that benefit when you're eating those purees, most of the vitamin C is lost during the steaming and pureeing process versus eating it in a whole vegetable. Um, pureeing foods also releases extra sugars within those foods, making the foods taste sweeter and increasing the chance of tooth decay. So you really have to watch that when you're doing purees, you really need to make sure you're brushing teeth right away because all of those purees are very sugary, even if there's no added sugar. So those are just a few of the drawbacks of using puree foods. Um, so we're gonna talk about the pros and cons now of baby lead weaning. And how are we doing on time? I know I'm talking a long time. <laughs> Keep going, you got about 20, 25 minutes. Okay, um, so big pro of baby led weaning, it's fun. It's entertaining for your baby. It's social, it's increasing your family values. You're including your baby as part of the family. There are huge long-term benefits to having family meals that we've all seen over the last 10 years. There's all kinds of studies about it, including baby from day one makes, it's great for them. Developmentally, it's great for them. Emotionally, socially, this is a great time to sit down with your entire family. And if you can't do it with the entire family, three meals a day, that's totally okay. Most people can't. Try and make sure your baby's eating at least with one person. Uh, I know with, uh, I nanny for a little boy part-time during the days, and sometimes I'm just not ready for lunch at the time that he's ready for lunch, but I'll usually get some carrot sticks or a piece of toast or something, and I'll just sit and eat alongside him. Um, whether I'm eating a lot or not, it's meal time, and I want him to feel like it's a social aspect to it. Um, your baby's going to learn about real food, real textures, real smells, real tastes. They're going to start to different differentiate between the foods that they like and the foods that they don't like. And it's not always going to be the same thing. They might like something one day and not the next day. And I got to admit, I'm the same way. I might have wanted pork tenderloin last night, but tonight I want spaghetti. <laughs> I don't want the same exact food every day. Um, so it's giving them variety. It's giving them textures. It's giving them difference. Um, your baby's going to learn to trust their food and trust their instincts because they're given the free reign to choose what to do with it. And they're given the free reign to say no, to say, I don't want to put this in my mouth or I put it in my mouth and I didn't like it. I don't want it back in my mouth again. There's consent in that and consent builds trust. You're giving baby the power to say yes or no to their food. And that allows them to trust you and to try new things more readily. 
uh, because it's a lot harder to try a new thing if you're not sure you're going to like it, but you know whether you like it or not, you're going to be made to eat the whole thing. So um, the ability to reject their food give, increases their willingness to try it. Um, it also increases the safety of introducing solids. And this is contrary to what most people think. Most people think that purees are a lot safer than whole pieces of food when you're introducing solids, but this is actually not quite true. Um, the reason for this is that Hold developmentally, on. This one. <laughs> developmentally, you are born with a gag reflex. Um, right. When you are born, that gag reflex is the back three quarters of your tongue. So basically everything but the tip. If something touches any of the rest of that tongue, you're gonna gag. That's a protective mechanism to keep anything from traveling to the back of the throat that's not supposed to be there. Now that starts to fade around the four to five month mark and it goes back to about half the tongue. And by the time you're an adult, it's only the back one quarter to one third of the tongue that has that gag reflex. So you have to reach pretty far back in your mouth as an adult to uh, instigate that gag reflex. But for a six month old baby, it's about halfway between where they are as a newborn and where they're going to be as an older child or an adult. It's important to give your baby solid foods, actual solid foods, not pureed solids, before that gag reflex goes away. The reason for this being when they're first experimenting with solid foods, you want them to gag when it travels too far back too quickly. Uh, now, this is why people think that baby led weaning is a lot scarier because your baby does gag and cough a little bit more. That's good. That's your baby's body doing what it's supposed to do. Because here's the thing. If you are doing purees and you don't give any solids till 10 or 11 months when there's barely any gag reflex left, and they've only been doing these purees, which are put in the mouth and travel down the throat without intention, then what are they gonna do when they get that solid? It's gonna go in their mouth and they're just gonna swallow. They haven't learned about chewing yet. They haven't learned about moving food around in their mouth yet. All they know is every food that's ever been put in their mouth has gone into their mouth and straight down their throat. So suddenly they've got a piece of food this big that they put in their mouth and they swallow immediately. Now, hopefully their gag reflex still kicks in and they gag it back up again, or sometimes they'll vomit it or sometimes they'll cough so they don't choke on it. But if they don't swallow it exactly right, they're gonna choke on it. What happens with baby led weaning is when that gag reflex is still strong, they're putting food in their mouth, they're gagging, it's coming back out again. They put it back in, they gag, it comes back out again. They put it back in and they go, okay, well, if I move it this way, I don't gag. And then if I use my gums a little bit and then I swallow, I can actually swallow and not gag it back out. And if they do it a little too quickly, they cough. That's line two of the protection. The line two expels food uh, with a burst of air. So gagging uses your tongue to expel food. Coughing uses air to expel food. It is extremely, extremely rare for a baby who's introduced through baby led weaning to actually choke on food because they have such protective mechanisms built into their own body. Wow. Part of that is just understanding choking. Gagging is not choking. Coughing is not choking. Vomiting is not choking. Those are protective mechanisms. Choking is when the food has made it past all of those lines of defenses and has gone to the back of the throat and now baby needs assistance to actually expel that food. And that's where the Heimlich maneuver comes in. And it's still very important to know the Heimlich maneuver, period, if you've got kids. Because if you don't use it when they're babies, you might use it when they're seven and they swallow a whole grape. It happens. Um, okay. <laughs> but um, if you're doing purees, you still wanna make sure you're introducing solid pieces of food before the nine month mark while that protective mechanism is still in place because it's not safe to give them solid foods. There was for a while people talking about, well, you should wait till a year to introduce any solid foods. Those babies had a really, really difficult time because they no longer have protective reflexes and suddenly they're being given all this food and they're choking on it. I'm going to tell you, in my 15 years and all the babies I've taken care of, I have never had to give the Heimlich to a baby led weaning baby. I have had gaggers, I have had vomiters, I have had coughers, I have never had a choking baby with baby led weaning. I have had to give the Heimlich three times with babies that I did purees with. Okay, so I have a question. Yes. If a baby is doing purees mm -hmm. and you want to introduce 
introduce that solid? What's the good food to introduce the solid in between the purees? Because I want to find a happy medium. I know mom is, is good with the purees. She loves the purees, but from what you're saying, I don't want him to get past that gag reflex uh, mm -hmm. point. And because he's, you know, he loves his food. How old is your baby? <laughs> he's six months old. He's six months old. Um, so you can, we're gonna talk in a minute about some of the dangers of doing a combination of purees and baby led weaning. Okay. Um, but what you can do typically, there is a way to do them both safely. Um, but if you are already doing a lot of spoon feeding and he's used to getting four to six ounces of, of spoon fed meal each day, it might be kind of difficult to go the other way. Um, so that's a personal right. decision you guys can look at. It's only like a, a week and a half in. Okay. <laughs> so so at that point, you, could, you could just stop purees and start doing baby lead weaning now. Okay. Or you can continue doing purees and you can start offering pieces of food. Um, and we're gonna talk in a minute about how you introduce baby lead weaning the first foods. It's gonna be a little different, um, but if you are doing purees, what you can do is just put small pieces of food that are very, very mushy in front of him. Now he's probably not gonna have the developmental readiness to actually pick them up and get them to his mouth yet um, for small pieces of food, but you can put them in front of him. So if you're doing pureed carrots, then you can also have one little carrot that's chopped up into small pieces and put it on his tray. Um, think like puffs, but do healthier puffs. They don't really need puffs. Um, so you could do that. You can do uh, smushed blueberries or smushed black beans or um, all kinds of things. Just anything very soft in, in a small amount for them to play with. How about soft avocados? Absolutely. Soft avocados, soft bananas, soft avocados. That, soft that, that's the one that, yeah, okay. yep. Um, and we'll talk in a minute uh, about how you can kind of do both safely together as well. Okay. Um, let's see, we were still on the pros and cons. Uh, so the safety concerns, the gagging, coughing, choking, knowing the difference. So when a baby's choking, they're not making any noise. There's no air coming out. So if they're making noise, you just let them handle it. As soon as it goes from <coughs> to that's choking. So you just need to know how to react at that point. Um, make sure that you have a safe high chair. Your baby is not going to fall out of, but I'm gonna be honest. I don't love the whole five point straps on high chairs because if a baby is choking, I wanna be able to get that baby out quickly. And this is another area we're having a baby who is sitting up well and has good trunk support is helpful because you can put just a waist strap around them and not necessarily have to have the full five point harness on them. So that if there is a choking issue, you can get baby out quickly. Um, so to be safe, you're going to always have them sitting upright or slightly forward, never reclining back. If they start reclining back, move their food and say, you need to sit up straight until they sit up straight and then give them their food back again. You don't want them eating like this because it's just not safe. Um, you want to make sure there's no choking hazard foods. So um, whole nuts, grapes, or food with small bones in it. Um, I mentioned chicken legs are a good thing to give them earlier, but if they've got those knuckles on them, pull the knuckle off before you give a chicken leg to a baby. Um, Nobody feeds your baby but baby. This includes siblings, grandparents, anybody. This is important to tell people when you are out in public, please don't put food in my baby's mouth. I know you really want giving. <laughs> Let your baby concentrate. Don't distract them. Um, this is one of the hardest things to teach parents because they really badly want to go, oh my gosh, you're eating your food. Oh, look at you. Oh, you put it in your mouth. Oh, you swallowed it. Oh, good job. Oh, look at you eating your broccoli you're just gonna distract your baby. Um, it's good to include them in the conversation, but also sometimes to give them their space, to sit down and eat your food or talk to someone else at the table and let them do their thing, not to distract them. Um, and don't have the TV on in the background. Don't have music on in the background. Don't have toys at the table. Eating time is eating time. And the only entertainment they need right now is the food sitting on the table in front of them because that's plenty entertaining. They're going to love it. Um, and always supervise your baby. Always make sure that you're in the same room with them, watching them when they're eating, which is, of course, easier since you're sitting at a family meal anyway. 
Um, so baby led weaning gives you better nutrition because your diet tends to be more varied. And because of that, you tend to have more adventurous eaters. This can also be achieved with purees by making homemade purees because the taste of the foods is going to be more similar to what you eat in real life as an adult or as an older child. Um, it gives healthy appetite control. They learn to trust their stomach. We talked about that a little bit already. Um, food before one is just for fun. Have you heard that? Food before one I've is heard, just for fun? Heard, That's heard. not necessarily true. I don't, I don't believe in it, but I've heard of it. Here's what I tell people. Before one, the primary nutrition for the most part is breast milk and formula. Yes. But food before one is not just for fun. Food before one has major developmental gains. It teaches your baby about gravity, about shapes, about size, about weight, about texture. It employs every sense your baby has, their sight, their touch, their sound, their smell, their taste. Your baby is learning more developmentally sitting at the table eating solid foods than they are sitting in their playroom playing with their developmental wood toys. Yes. Food before one, nutritionally, mostly just for fun, but developmentally food before one is very important. It improves their dexterity and their coordination. It improves their confidence because you're putting that trust in them that they know when to start and they know when to stop. Your meals are easier and cheaper because you're mostly just making very small changes to what's in front of you. You're not spending hours pureeing food every night or filling up 18 ice cube trays with puree food. And don't get me wrong, I actually love making pureed baby foods, but it does save a lot of time. Um, your baby will have less pickiness. You'll have fewer power struggles and battles. It's less parental stress overall. And it's easier to eat out at restaurants because they can just eat a little of whatever you're eating. Here's the big con. Baby led weaning is really, really messy. <laughs> yeah. It's gonna make a huge mess because they are learning, like I said, about gravity, about texture, about shapes and sizes and throwing and all of these things. And they're gonna make a big mess. But here's what I'm gonna tell you. We just talked about you're not spending hours pureeing baby foods. It's a lot of cleanup when you make baby purees. If you just kind of shift that and go, we're gonna have a lot of cleanup when my baby eats, it's not that big a change. It's not gonna take you that much time. Just understand, uh, make a game plan, either have your baby eat naked or get a bib that works best for you or have, a, what I like to do is have about 20 washcloths and I use one washcloth per meal. So when baby's done, I swipe the face, I swipe the hands, I move baby to a clean, safe spot, and then I use that rag to wipe up the entire tray, toss it in the laundry and wash it. I use one rag for every meal. My favorite way to do it. I, can I make a suggestion? Absolutely. Because um, I know there are all these expensive little floor mats that you can buy to, because, and, and especially families who have animals. Mm -hmm. The gravity part, when they find out that I can drop it on the floor and the dog will come and eat it, <laughs> it becomes a game. Yep. And when sometimes the dog doesn't like what you have and it remains on the floor. So I suggest instead of spending, you know, $20, $30 on these little fancy floor mats, go to the dollar store, go to Walmart, get you a shower curtain, hmm. a, a shower curtain liner. It's plastic. It's easy. You can, uh, it's easy to just, you know, shake it off, wipe it off, put it back down. It's that. so much easier and it's a lot cheaper because regardless as to whether it's one of the expensive ones or it's a cheap little uh, shower curtain liner, it's going to get stepped on, it's going to get messed up and you spend all this money and you're mad. I've had several parents, man, I spent all this money and the blueberries are stuck in there and it's stained and it's <laughs> Yep. I yep. told you shower curtain, you know, it's $3. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, I agree completely. I had a whole nother big thing I was going to go through, but I'm just going to condense it as quickly as possible because I know we're running okay. out of time. When you start baby led weaning foods, uh, what you're going to start with is you're going to start with what we call finger foods. This means foods shaped like a finger. This means because at six months developmentally, your baby has the ability to grasp food and put their fists to their mouth. They don't have the ability to open that fist or to pick up food 
or to pick up food like this yet. So what they need to be able to do is hold half their food on this portion of the food. And then when it falls down, they're probably gonna drop their food and they're gonna pick up the next piece, okay? They're not ever gonna eat that portion in the hand because they just don't have that yet. Pretty soon you're gonna notice that as they're breaking off this little piece of food, um, they'll look at it and they'll go down and they'll pick that up and they'll put it to their mouth. Oftentimes they'll take their other hand, put it here, and then they'll open that and put it in your mouth. You've now reached the next developmental stage of baby led weaning. Yes. At that point, you can start introducing some smaller piece foods along with the finger size foods. Um, and that's some of the stuff we were talking about. Um, carrots and broccoli and anything. You can chop some of it off. Some of it you can do in your finger foods. As they're getting more proficient with those small pieces of foods, you can start doing less of the finger size foods. Um, you can give them from day one, you can give them clumpy foods like sticky rice or thick oatmeal, soft foods like pasta shapes or strawberries. Um, again, those are all good ones to do alongside purees as well as first foods are gonna be those soft shapes like shaped pasta or strawberries. Um, whole grain pasta and whole grain bread, we all know is much healthier and has a lot more fiber and that's great. It's also a lot tougher on baby's stomach. So um, while it is important to introduce them to those flavors, because in the long run, it's a lot healthier, um, make sure you're not overdoing it or say you have um, whole wheat pasta for lunch and you're having something bread-based for dinner, do a white bread. Um, just, you don't wanna overload them on the whole grain things as healthy as it is for them, just because it's a little hard on their digestive system at first. Um, so around that seven to nine month mark, they're going to start to get food out of their fist. They can do some smaller foods. They can do crunchy foods. Crunchy foods are very important for babies, just as they are for adults. I don't know if you know this, but when you hear that crunch inside your brain, it releases um, hormones that make you happy. That's why everybody loves potato chips. Uh, crunching <laughs> is actually is good. Is that why we love them? <laughs> <laughs> now, I prefer to recommend stuff like uh, bell peppers for baby's first crunchy food, not necessarily potato chips, uh, but crunchy foods are good to give them sometimes. Around eight to 10 months, they're gonna start using their fingers to pick up food. And they're gonna pick it up like this at first and coordinate the use of both hands. So sometimes they might pick it up with their left hand, take it in their right hand and put it in their mouth. Um, this is a good time to start offering cutlery. Um, sometimes you're gonna load up a spoon and give it to them, let them put it in their mouth. You can kind of help them, but make sure again, baby is the only one putting food in their mouth. Um, by the time they're at nine to 12 months, they can basically eat anything. They can eat small pieces. They can eat big pieces. They can have a variety of shapes and textures. Only thing they can't have is honey. No honey until age one right. uh, because it's a risk of botulism. No whole nuts until they have molars in the back of their mouth. Make sure they're crushed nuts or chopped nuts. Um, Around 11 to 14 months, you're gonna start seeing them become proficient with forks and spoons and cutlery, uh, but you're still gonna see them eating with their hands a lot of the time. Some babies, not so much. A lot of babies wait until they're closer to a year and a half before they really start eating most of the time with cutlery. Forks are easier than spoons um, and a lot more fun for them to deal with. It's really hard on a small plate to scoop with a spoon, but it's really fun to stab something. Um, so uh, meat is a great first food. Why? Because it's high in iron. One of the main reasons you're introducing solid foods into your baby's diet is because they need iron. Uh, when you're giving meat, you're going to give it in the strip form, the finger food form. Um, you're not expecting them to break off large portions of meat. Say you're giving them some steak or that chicken leg we talked about. Uh, I love the chicken leg. It's one of the best things for babies. Mostly what they're going to be getting is the juice from that meat. They're going to suck on it. They're not going to break a lot off, but they're going to suck on it. And that broth, basically, that they're getting out of the meat is the most highly condensed form of iron in their diet. Mm -hmm. um, and it's very good to give them meat. And you can give them small meats, too. You know, do a crock pot of beef. Um, and that will actually break up and they can actually swallow some piece of that. But meat is good to have in the diet. We have a question. Yes. Uh, Susan wants to know how old for crunchy do they need molars? Uh, How they does that have to be for crunchy? Uh, it depends on what you're giving them. Um, so I really like bell peppers for crunchy foods, uh, but bell peppers still need to be cooked a little bit. It's just, those are one of the ones that can be cooked a little bit more al dente. Um, so that's gonna be when you're starting to see them break off pieces of food and gnaw around in their mouth before they swallow, they don't necessarily need teeth to chew. 
your gum, their gums are strong enough that they're going to break down most food and chew it just fine. I had one baby who was 15 months old before he got his first teeth and he could eat anything. Um, other good crunchy foods to give uh, rice cakes. And one cool thing about rice cakes is you can put pureed stuff on it. So say um, you have like a lentil soup or something, you can get a rice cake and, and dip it Dip lentil soup in there. Sorry, <laughs> now Paris just made a really big crash. <laughs> um, so uh, uh, the, we call those dippers. Dippers are really good to give them. Um, and it can be uh, salt-free breadsticks. Um, just something that gives them a little different texture, something they break off and gnaw on. Um, they have some great uh, Italian breadsticks that are low in salt that are hard um, and they're shaped like a stick and they can just gnaw on those and those give them the crunch and they're also, they soften when they're gnawing on them in their mouth. So if it's something that's gonna soften once it's inside their mouth and mixing with saliva, um, you can give it to them earlier. If it's something they are really gonna have to chew, um, and then you want to do it later. By the way, popcorn, huge choking hazard. You want to avoid that for quite a while as well. Yeah, Nicole said she's currently eating popcorn and enjoying the crunch. No popcorn for babies though. <laughs> no popcorn for babies, sorry. <laughs> uh, and if you're having some potato chips, it's okay to give baby a potato chip. But um, this is one of the things I just want to tell you, watch the sodium intake. Babies should not be having a ton of salt. So this is not necessarily when you're cooking home cooked meals, the salt that you're throwing in it's nothing compared to what you're finding in prepackaged foods, in canned oh, yeah. foods, in processed foods, uh, in potato chips. All of these things, just really watch that sodium content. And um, people, parents will hear that and go, oh, so I can't ever add any salt to my meal? No. You might want to add a little less salt than you usually do, especially if you cook like I do, because my food's really good and salt has a lot to do with that. Um, <laughs> but uh, you don't have to completely omit it altogether. Just be cognizant of how much you're putting in. You, we don't need as much salt as we're eating either. Um, and that's one great thing about baby led weaning. When you are cooking the family meal and with your baby in mind, you tend to start eating healthier yourself as well. Um, gradually their milk is gonna decrease, but it's gonna be on their timetable. And knowing that you are seeing how much they're eating and seeing it increase and seeing a little less mess and a little more coming through the other side, um, tells you that they're getting the nutrition they need, that it's okay that they're decreasing that milk. Um, so what other things? Some great first foods for baby led weaning. And um, the one food every three days thing is a little bit outdated. You mentioned it earlier. It's a little bit outdated now. They're not as concerned about doing only one new food every three days. The only one you need to be concerned if that is gonna be your top eight allergen foods. Um, and I didn't write them down, but it's wheat and soy and milk and chicken and uh, peanuts, eggs, and there's two others. And I can't remember them berries, off the top of my head. You put it in that? Uh, berries and tree nut. No, berries actually aren't one of the top allergens. Okay, because I, I know that there used to be a concern about giving babies berries early because berries can be an allergic, you know, so, and one of the reasons those allergies came is because of delayed introduction. So definitely give your baby berries early because okay. waiting till two years for berries actually causes allergies. For most foods, waiting too long to give them will cause allergies. Okay. Um, so there's a huge correlation now between introducing foods earlier and, and actually avoiding those allergies. Um, but some great first foods to do for baby lead weaning, um, broccoli, cauliflower, sweet potatoes, green beans, snap peas, carrots, eggplant, rutabagas, parsnips, zucchini, squash. I have a huge list here. Cucumbers, that's a really good one for teething. All of those can be cut into that finger shape um, and they can gnaw on it. Things like avocados, you can cut it into a quarter, leave the skin on. It makes it easier for them to hold on to. They'll spit out the skin, um, but it'll give them something to hold on to. Same thing with apples. Just cut an apple in really? half, give them the half of the apple with the skin on. Mangoes leave the skin on. Pineapple leave the skin on. These are all things that they can get a hold on and then they will eat around that. Um, oh. Okay, yeah. so that means I need to make sure that I wash all these fruits on the outside and make sure because even, you know, from, you know, from farm to table back in the day was one thing. Farm to table now is, okay, let's make sure that we get all this off of here. 
And for this reason, if you can, if you have the ability, organic foods are going to be a better choice. Not every family has that ability and that's okay. Just wash your foods really well. Um, they still probably have some sort of pesticide and wax on it from wherever they came from. Wash your foods really well. Same thing with bananas. Um, typically I'll just cut a little inch of the peel at the top off and then they can hold the peel and suck on it. It's almost like a, a banana ice cream cone and they can wow. suck off the banana. Um, okay, we have two questions. Yes. One, is there a link to the list, the food list, and two, uncooked apples, how early? Uncooked apples. At the very beginning, I typically will steam them or toss them in the microwave just for a minute or two. Um, so steam them for a minute or two or toss them in the microwave for a few seconds just to okay. get them a little bit softer. But honestly, um, by the time you see they're actually starting to break pieces off and move them around in their mouth, which can be right away or could be two months, it's very obvious when they start actually eating the food. Um, around that time, you can give them to them raw. I have a 10 month old I'm watching right now. He's been having raw apples since eight months old. And I give them to him in slices. And he, he likes to eat them like a chipmunk. He goes, it turns into like a little applesauce everywhere. Yeah, you got that on video. <laughs> yes, I did. Okay, we have about five minutes. Okay. Uh, yes. So let's just do questions. I've gone through most of this, but I will I will give you a list of foods to introduce, foods to avoid, and what my recommended first ones are. I'll come back on um, since we didn't get to that and put that all on the Facebook Live. Okay. Um, so that everyone. So. Can um, Sam Sam wants to know uh, the book recommendation. I already put the book recommendation. Scroll back up to the top, uh, Sam Sam. There's a book recommendation. Can you show the book again? Yes, this is the book. It's called Baby Led Weaning, The Essential Guide. This is the 10th anniversary edition. So that is a good one. Or you can get the original. Okay. They're both great. Can you, can you run? There you go. So we can see there the author. Go. Yeah, uh, there we go. Right okay. there. So now, there's the book. don't confuse this with the Baby Led Weaning Cookbook. They look very similar. And I'm going to tell you, I don't recommend the baby led weaning cookbook unless you really just don't ever cook and you need help. Let me um, make sure that I didn't put the wrong book in the link. <laughs> <laughs> the recipes in the baby led weaning cookbook are very simple. They're not okay. favorite in the world. They don't taste wonderful if you're a cook yourself. Um, it's, it's not a bad cookbook, but Personally, I would rather just make some small adjustments to the food I cook on a regular basis. Now, okay. if you don't have a very healthy eating style, you eat a lot of takeout, a lot of processed foods, um, and you need ideas of what are healthy things to cook, then absolutely go ahead and get the baby led weaning cookbook. But if you are a proficient cook yourself already, it's not going to be a cookbook you're really going to use much. Because eventually you want the child to eat whatever the family is eating. Yes. You don't want to have to make three meals. Absolutely, two, meal, two separate meals, one for the baby and one for you, which is what what which is what basically what you're doing when you're doing parades. Yeah. So, any other questions? Uh, I don't see any. Uh, Nicole says my one year old loves apples. We got did the book recommendation. The uncut link. The list of uh, the list of foods. Is there a link? Is it in the book? Uh, or do you have a list? Are, yes, there's a lot of lists in the fit in the book. I can put them here as well, but I will. Nope, there we go. But I'm also going to post these on the Facebook group afterwards. Um, so I'll make sure I go on right after this and post this list of foods. But here they are. Okay. The screen later as well. Okay. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. So, um, is there any last things you want to do? Tips, clues tips and tricks. Uh, you know, I, like I said earlier, baby led weaning is not for everybody. If you are just absolutely terrified that your baby's going to choke and they're not ready, go ahead and just do the purees and go through and, and take it slow and go based on when you feel the time is right. As a parent, especially as a mother, you're going to have that instinct and that intuition that's going to tell you what's right for you. Um, for a lot of parents who want to do a mixed approach, I really recommend not doing the mixed approach most of the time. If you're going okay. to do the mixed approach, then make sure baby is the only one feeding themselves. So that means you can do purees. You're going to load the spoon for them. 
and put the spoon in their hand and you can even kind of help them guide it too close to their mouth. So your spoon's going to be, hey, I've got a spoon here. Uh, <laughs> your spoon's going to be about here and you're going to wait for them to go for it and put it in their mouth. Um, so don't put the food in their mouth and definitely don't put the food in the back of their mouth. They're only going to eat off the tip of the spoon at first. Right. Um, well, my so six months all have, but they're little spoons. Uh, and they have like little, it's, it's a flat, like plastic silicone thing. Keep it from going to it has like little grooves in it. Yeah. And that's what I, I let the six month old feed himself. I just help him dip and he is, it goes here. It, goes, it is very messy, but okay. he gets some and he sucks it off of there. And then he looks and he hands it back to me. We dip it and then he goes for it again. Well, now, then it does tell take you. a long time to feed him. Mm -hmm. But I'd rather him, like you said, get the hunger cues for yeah. himself. And I don't substitute the food for his nutrition that he gets from his formula. Yeah. Um, now, what I'm going to tell you is you're basically doing baby led weaning now. So if you want to introduce some solids, introducing those finger foods, as long as you've been letting him feed himself with the spoon, then it's absolutely okay to introduce those feed, finger foods. When it becomes a danger is if you're pushing the food to the back of their mouth mm -hmm. alongside trying to give them peace food as well. And when that's the case, then you have to be a lot more careful because they're just not gonna okay. understand how to move food around in their mouth. But chances are, if he's been putting the food in his mouth, he's been learning that as well. So just introducing a new variety of textures and tastes would be wonderful for you guys. Okay. I highly recommend getting the book. Um, again, I wanted to tell you guys, I'm Nanny Consults, nannyconsults.com. I'm actually working on writing my own book about introducing solids, and I hope to release that next spring. So if anybody here is interested in that book and when it's going to be released, please go over to my website, which is www.nannyconsults.com. Uh, and sign up for my email list because I will definitely be, be releasing, um, once I've really got that book going, be releasing more information on that as it comes. Um, I'm also, because of Black Friday, I'm doing a 20% off of all of my consulting packages, not just my introducing solids, but my interview coaching, resume writing, contract writing, hiring a nanny, sleep consulting. Um, I'm doing 20% off of all of those packages. So if you're interested in any of that, let me know. Um, and yeah, I love this. If anybody wants to talk more about introducing solids, this is, if you can't tell, it's something I'm very passionate about and something that I love. Oh, we can tell. Yeah. 15 pages, we can tell. <laughs> <laughs> because a lot of, it may just be 15 pages presenta in your presentation, but there's a whole lot I know that you cut out of there. Okay, this is not as important as that. That's not as important as this. I've had to write papers before. Mm -hmm. I know the research that has to go into Shoot, mine was only 10. I know you 15. And that all was on what age to introduce foods. That didn't yes. even cover what, how to do it. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you so much for introducing us to baby led weaning. I know there's a whole lot more that goes with that. I'm going to go get the book. I am off for the rest of the week. So I will be slowly reading this book and figuring out how I can introduce uh the idea to mama first because mm -hmm. I can't I can't go past what she allows for her child yeah. and that's one that's one important thing do not try to do this on your own please make sure that mom and dad are on board before you yes. start you know, trying to do your own thing because they may not be acceptable accepting yeah. of this it is always mom and dad's decision, and that is always okay. The one yeah. thing I won't do anymore, and I stopped a decade ago, is I will not force feed a baby anymore, whether it be milk or purees. But I tell parents that at the very beginning, and most of the time they go, oh, I'd never, I'd never ask that. And then oftentimes they come in and say, oh, he needs to eat more. Why don't you just put it in his mouth? I say, nope, we talked about this. Yeah. Parents are always right, but you're allowed to have your deal breakers too. However, baby led weaning should not be a deal breaker. It's not safe to do it with a family who's not comfortable with it. Right, right, right. Okay, Susan, I will link, link the spoons. I'll find them on Amazon and I will link them here um, in the, the, the live feed so that you'll know what spoons I'm talking about. Awesome. So, all right, before Zoom cuts us off, <laughs> thank you so much for uh, 
talking to us and giving us tips and giving us advice and giving us foods and, and you have enlightened me because I tried it once and I did not like it because I was coughing and a gagging and it scared me. Honestly, it scared me. And I think that's what uh, made me not want to do it. So thank you all for joining us thank and next week we will have we're doing our self-care checkup it's been six weeks believe it or not it's been six weeks we're going to do another health care uh self-care checkup with you all so i will see you all on uh, next week thank you wendy for everything and yes i want to know about the book i will be uh signing up for the email list or whatever it is that, that i need to sign up on your website so awesome. you all have a good Thanksgiving and be thankful and enjoy your families and love on them and tell them how much you love them because tomorrow is not promised. And we will see you all next time. Thank you, Angela. You're welcome. You're welcome.